gases exchanged in amphibians. Now we look at one member of the class amphibia as a representative of how gases exchange occurs among the amphibians. Amphibians will be presented by the frog. The frog, just like the rest of the amphibians, live on both land and in water. The early stages of growth and development is represented by the tadpole that hatches from the eggs. The tadpole lives entirely in water where it grows and develops into the adult frog. The adult frog lives partly in water and on land. Because of its varying habitats, the frogs have structures for breathing in water and on land. In the tadpole that lives entirely in water, there are three pairs of external gills that are used for gases exchange. These external gills are highly vascularized and oxygen from the water diffuses across oxygen from the water diffuses across the gill membrane and into the blood while carbon four oxide from the blood diffuses out because there's always a diffusion gradient whereby there is more water there's more oxygen in the water than in the blood so oxygen diffuses into the blood while there will always be more carbon four oxide in the blood than in the water so carbon four oxide diffuses from the blood across the membrane into the water so the external gills are highly branched to increase the surface area for gases exchange their membranes are very thin and they are highly vascularized vascularized to establish and maintain a steep diffusion gradient in the adult that lives both in water and on dry land there are three sites for gases exchange these are the skin the mouth cavity and the lungs so in this diagram here you can see the skin the mouth cavity and the lungs these are the three sites for gases exchange that are used depending on the location of the organism whether it is in water or it is on land now, gases exchange through the skin occurs both on land and in water. The skin of the frog presents a very large surface area and this makes it very efficient for gases exchange. In addition, to look at this internal, this skin prevents a very large surface area and in addition, it, may, it consists of a very thin layer to facilitate rapid gases exchange. Beneath the thin layer, there's a dense network of blood capillaries which maintains a steep diffusion gradient. And the skin is kept moist at all times by mucus that is secreted by glands in the skin. So within the skin, there are glands that secrete mucus which keeps the skin moist. Now, oxygen concentration in the water or the atmosphere is higher than in the blood. So, oxygen will diffuse across the skin and 
into the capillary membranes and into the blood. Through the blood it is transported to all parts of the body. Carbon dioxide, on the other hand will always have a higher concentration in the blood than the surrounding water or air. So carbon dioxide diffuses out of the blood across the capillary membranes and across the thin skin layer and into the atmosphere or water. So because of the thinness of the skin, the high vascularization and the mucus that keeps it moist, the skin or prevents a very efficient surface area for gases exchange in the frog. Remember the, the frog uses the skin both on land and while in water. The buccal cavity is another important site for gases exchange. The buccal cavity, just like the skin, is used both on land and in water for gases exchange. Just like the skin, the buccal cavity walls are lined with a thin membrane that is kept moist and also the walls are well supplied with an extensive network of blood capillaries. Air is forced in during inhalation and out during exhalation. And it's the muscles of the floor of the buccal cavity that are involved in this process. So during inhalation, the floor of the buccal cavity is lowered. So it's lowered. And this increases the volume of the buccal cavity. With the increase in the volume of the buccal cavity, the pressure drops and hence air enters through the now open nostrils into the buccal cavity. Oxygen concentration is higher in the air that has entered the buccal cavity. So oxygen diffuses into the blood vessels present in the lining of the buccal cavity. At the same time, carbon dioxide diffuses in the opposite direction because of a diffusion gradient. So that the air that is inhaled has a higher concentration of oxygen, so oxygen diffuses into the wall, while the air has a lower concentration of carbon dioxide compared to the blood. So carbon dioxide diffuses out to the air. Once the gases exchange has taken place, then the air is expelled during exhalation. And this comes about when the floor of the buccal cavity is raised. With the raising of the floor of the buccal cavity, the volume is reduced. When the volume is reduced, the pressure in the cavity increases and hence air is expelled out through the open nostrils. And air is thus expelled from the buccal cavity. Then there is gases exchange through the lungs. Frogs have a pair of lungs located in the body cavity. However, if the frogs, just like the rest of the amphibians, the body lacks ribs and diaphragm. Since the thorax does not have the ribs, like what is present in the mammals and birds, and also there is no diaphragm. Thus, it is the movement of the mouth floor that is used to force air in and out of the lungs. So these are the lungs, and the opening 
into the lungs is guarded by a flap known as the glottis. So air is forced into the lungs during inhalation and then out during exhalation. So during inhalation, the floor of the mouth cavity is lowered. This increases the volume and air is drawn in through the open nostrils. During inhalation, the mouth remains closed, so air can only enter through the open nostril. So air is sucked in as a result of the decreased pressure when the mouth floor is lowered to increase the volume of the buccal cavity. Once the air has been drawn in, the nostril is closed and the floor of the mouth is raised, reducing the volume and as a result, pressure is raised. While this is happening, the glottis opens and air is forced into the lungs. Oxygen in the air dissolves into the moist inner lining of the alveoli of the lungs and it then diffuses into the blood across the wall of the capillaries and is then transported to all parts of the body. Carbon dioxide, on the other hand, diffuses from the tissues and into the alveoli because the inhaled air has a lower concentration of carbon dioxide compared to the concentration of carbon dioxide in the blood. So CO2 will diffuse out into the alveolar air. Just like the inhaled air has a higher concentration of oxygen than the concentration of oxygen in the blood, so oxygen diffuses from the air, alveolar air, into the blood and is thus transported to all parts of the body. During exhalation, the floor of the mouth cavity is lowered. This increases the volume of the mouth cavity and thus the pressure drops. The glottis opens and air is sucked from the lungs into the mouth cavity. Now during this time when the mouth floor is lowered, the nostril is closed and of course the mouth remains closed. So when the floor of the mouth cavity is lowered and there's an increase in volume, when with the nostril closed, air can only be sucked from the lungs through the now open glottis. Once the air has been sucked from the lungs and into the mouth cavity, the mouth floor is raised. The volume in the mouth cavity is reduced and this raises the pressure which will then now force air out through the now open nostril. Well, during this time, the glottis is closed when the floor of the mouth is raised. So the buildup of pressure here will force the air out through the now open nostril and not back into the lungs because the nostril is closed. And in this way, air is forced out of the lungs after gases exchange has taken place.